Relays provide the user with a number of different options. For example, if you want to control higher voltages than what your microcontroller can put out, or maybe AC rather than DC, or higher current loads, Relays provide you with that option. So let's take a look at how to use Relays with a microcontroller. A relay consists of a coil. That coil may be specified on the relay having a certain resistance in ohms. It may also have a certain voltage rating. So what we need to be able to do to energize the contacts that are part of this coil is to energize the coil itself. Now again, as I said, there are some contacts associated with it. So let me draw some of those in. So let's say we have a relay such as this. We will have then a common connection, and the actual relay may vary. There may be a dual set of contacts. Uh, in this case, I'm showing just a set where I have a common, a normally closed, and a normally open set. What I mean by this is without energizing this coil, the path between the common and this normally closed will be made. When I energize this coil, this pathway will be broken, and the pathway to the normally open will then be closed. So energizing the coil completes this part of the circuit. De-energizing the coil completes this part of the circuit. You could use one, the other, or both as a part of your circuit, depending upon what you want to have happen. But let's get back to the coil itself. So what we need to be able to do is connect this to our microcontroller. So let's say this is an output of our microcontroller. So we may be able to simply connect it up like this. One end of the coil going to the output, the other end of the coil going to ground. I say you may be able to. This coil will require a certain amount of current flow. And if you remember from previous discussions, a microcontroller can only source so much current. So depending upon your relay, this may or may not work. If this doesn't, we have some other options. But another thing to consider, whether we have it connected this way or in another fashion, this coil, when it's energized and then de-energized, will create a current flow in the opposite direction, which can harm the microcontroller. So we want to protect that microcontroller from that counter EMF, that counter electromotive force. So what we do is we use a diode in that case. So what we would do is put a diode across this coil such that the cathode would be facing our output, the anode facing our ground. So whenever we de-energize this coil, that current is short-circuited within this part of the circuit, not causing any harm or anything, but preventing that current from getting to our microcontroller. When we turn on this output, this will block any current flow going in this direction. All the current then will flow through the coil. So this is one way that we could connect it, and this would be the sourcing method, where we're providing the uh, output voltage current from the microcontroller itself and the other end of our device connected to ground. Now we may also, depending upon our relay, if the sourcing method does not work, but still depending upon how much current is required by the coil to relay, we may be able to connect it in this fashion. Now, I'm assuming that this coil can operate off of 5 volts. Now, I still need my protection diode in there, but now notice that the cathode appears to be facing in the opposite direction, but remember that this cathode needs to be facing the positive end of our supply, the anode towards our negative. So in this method, whenever I put this output low, it'll make the connection internally to ground, completing the circuit. And oftentimes microcontrollers can sync more than they can source. So this is another possible way to connect up your relay. Quite simple, doesn't take very many components or wires to make it work. 
but there's also a likelihood that neither sourcing or syncing will work. This coil may take more current than can be provided either by sourcing or by syncing, and then we'd have to look at another method. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So the we need something to sit in between our microcontroller and our relay. One possible device that we could use is the Darlington Array ULN2003. And there's my chip one indicator. And what this allows me to do is use a, a low voltage, low current signal to switch a similar or different voltage, but higher current uh, current uh, signal if I wish. So we have seven inputs on here and I'll use input number one and that would be connected to my microcontroller. So my microcontroller output would be connected to this input. The pin right across from that is the output that corresponds to this input and we would then connect our relay into this part. I'm going to just draw a box here but this represents the relay in its entirety. This is one end of the coil and this is the other end of the coil. Now in most cases the ULN2003 has those flyback diodes, those protection diodes built in. So we would not necessarily need to add in that relay across the coil. That's built into this component here. Now the ULN2003 is going to be syncing in all cases here. So we would take and we'd have our plus 5 volts if this is a 5 volt device. What's nice about the ULN, it takes a wide range of voltages. So if I needed and we're using a 12 volt relay. I would have my 12 volt connection there. If this is a 9 volt relay, no problem. I would simply connect my 9 volt. So the ULN2003, this Darlington array, gives me a lot of options. I can use all different kinds of voltages. There is a range that can be used. There is a maximum but it gives me a lot of latitude as to what I can do. And then besides, each one of these outputs can uh, sync much more current than my microcontroller can. So I can run much higher loads. Now I also need an additional connection here. I need to make sure that this chip is grounded. So on this pin number 8, so pin 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, this is a 16 pin package. I will need to make sure that this chip is grounded. And then typically as well, your voltage from for your device, that will also be connected to the chip, and that's via pin 9. So whenever this output goes on, this chip, ULN2003, completes the circuit to ground. So by causing the output to go high, it syncs this particular connection, completing the circuit, causing the relay to go on. One note back on this particular drawing, remember that with sourcing, this device will come on whenever this goes high, it'll go off whenever it goes low. With the syncing method, this output will go on whenever the output goes low and it will go off whenever it goes high. So there is a difference in how this operates both from the logic level and from the electrical connection point of view. Alright, so that concludes on how to use a relay with a microcontroller.